coding Minecraft series in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. In this video, this is part 19 of this series, and we are going to be coding the mechanics of one. Just as a recap from the last video, um, we coded some trees, you can see over here, and that tree appears to be, uh, you know, no trunk, but that's because it's outside of the, uh, it's outside of the render distance uh, view. So, uh, yeah, so that was quite successful, the trees worked and everything, but now we have to add water into the game to make this world look more alive, and um, as we code water, you'll see that this code for water also affects the trees, because uh, let's say the water level is over here, we have to make it so that no trees spawn under the water level. So that's something to look out for. So yeah, let's just dive straight into it. First of all, let me just open up this console. <clears throat> so the first step in coding water is to actually add the water texture and make the water block. So to do this, we're going to be using the same method as we created the other blocks. So just go ahead and copy this, paste it over here, and turn this into water texture. And you can also go ahead and delete uh, all these so that we just have like, so that we only have one remaining. And I just have to show you, this is the, the Minecraft folder. We have a folder called texture. And then inside that I created another folder called water. So it's like another block. And then inside that I have one texture over here called water.jpg. So why don't we, you know, create that directory. So uh, texture, water, oh sorry, there's the wrong one. It's over here. So texture, water and then water.jpg okay and now i'm going to copy this five more times because there's six sides and there you go we just created our water texture now we have to create the water block so copy this paste it here change the name into water and this material array should be water texture <clears throat> and also over here in the mesh we should change this into water texture and then we have the range. So water, it's not gonna have any range above the above the plane of the world. So just don't put anything over there. And then biome, it can exist in every biome so far. So plains and then desert. And then obviously we'll do append water over here. So now we've created the water block. Okay, so it's in the world. So now we actually have to add water so that it's naturally generated into the world. How do we do that? We can go into this initial chunk generation uh, code and just over here, we can add water. So why don't we go ahead and first add two variables. So first var water level is gonna be equal to zero, okay? And var water index is going to be similarly, um, like in the same method as these guys, uh, block types dot index off and then water okay and this just keeps uh, track of which index water is in um, in these blocks in these arrays so um, yeah let's go ahead and create this uh, code for generating water so first of all we need one variable called var water exists here and we're going to set this to false okay and this just makes sure that uh, uh, that we can sort of account for water being being existing at a point in the world, okay? And we can use this variable to check if a tree should be placed over there. So we need another variable called h, let's say, and this is equal to five. And h will basically control how high the water uh, block is above the above the naturally generated plane. So uh, we can use a while loop to generate this water. Uh, while true, yes, while true, uh, we can say if the height of that block, so if v plus h is uh, smaller or equal to the water level, okay? So as long as it's uh, beneath the water level, you can put water, okay? Obviously. But if it's, uh, if this value exceeds the water level, then you have to break the loop, so, so then don't make any more water. So now to add this water, uh, I've just written this really simple code. Uh, it's quite simple. All you have is this matrix, um, similarly uh, similar to this matrix and, and this matrix. Uh, it's basically the matrix that we're going to pass into the instance mesh instances. So 
um, we have the x value as x times 5, the v value as v plus h, or, or the uh, y value as v plus h, and the z value as z times 5, obviously. And then blocks dot blocks uh, water index dot mesh dot set matrix at that. Okay, so it's the same method or the like the same structure as we used for creating the other uh, blocks. You can see this is the same as that, almost. So this is almost the same as this. Okay, same structure. We're basically um, positioning all the blocks, and then we're increasing the count of that water mesh, and then we have to add that into the actual chunk array. So I just did chunk dot push a new block, and remember chunk is this array, which then gets appended to the chunks array. So chunk dot push a new block at those uh, coordinates, so x times five, v plus h, and z times five, and then false means it's not a placed block. And then uh, the name of water, which is just blocks. I mean, you, you could just write water also here, but yeah. uh, blocks water index on name. And then we have to increment h by five each time to go to the next uh, y level. And um, if this is the case, that means that water is existing over here. So uh, so you have to set this variable water exists to uh, be true. And uh, yeah, so that's this code will basically generate the water. The very last thing that we have to do in this instance uh, or like this initial chunk generation is we have to use this uh, water exists here variable uh, in this trees place. So we can just say uh, if the biome is equal to planes and if water exists here is false, so if there is no water, then you can put a tree. And now if we save and refresh uh, over here, we can see that our world now has water. Okay, so that's quite nice. Uh, there's water um, and obviously if you go beyond then the water will stop because we haven't coded it in the infinite terrain generation which we will do in a few moments so uh, notice how we can our cursor like this white plane over here it's um, it's on the water but that's that's really unlike minecraft and also we can break a water block okay and we can sort of place on a water block you can see uh, we can place on a water block so we have to we have to remove all these functionalities which we will do in this video. But first of all, let's just quickly go and make this water look a lot nicer because right now it's completely opaque. There's no transparency in the water. So why don't we go over here, uh, just above the initial chunk generation code and under these variables, I've written some code over here, setting the opacity of water. And this is really simple. All, all I'm doing is going through the water texture uh, because remember it's an, it's an array. Um, and then I'm saying that if it's two or three, if the index is two or three, which means that it's the top and the bottom face of the water block, then I have to uh, set the, the, op the opacity to 0.7. And then if it's on the side, it's 0.4. And this like combination just makes it uh, so that it's like, it looks like water. Um, and make sure that you put this condition over here or like this statement, because if you don't, then um, this statement won't be applied. So you have to make sure that the transparent uh, variable in this object is set to true. In yeah. So uh, once we save and refresh that, it won't look like uh, like real Minecraft, but uh, like real Minecraft water. But it's good enough. Okay. So you can see it's uh, it's uh, it's a quite transparent, and you can look through the surface. But once more, if you if I if I want to place a block on the on the bed of this pond. Uh, I'm actually going to place it on the top of the water, which is not what I want. I can still walk over the, uh, this water code for the initial chunk generation to the infinite uh, chunk generation code, okay? And we're basically just going to copy this and maybe change it and uh, maybe fiddle around with it. Okay. So, uh, but I want, uh, to, uh, I want you guys to see that at the start we have this bit of code, uh, which is basically for seeing the noise around the block and then the water code and then the depth code okay so first just go ahead and copy this and then go down to the infinite terrain generation part which is in the update function so yeah here infinite terrain generation part so if we look at the first direction which is going forward um, and then if we were to paste this over here okay so notice how right over here we have that bit of code so the seeing the noise around that block the water code and then the depth code so it's basically the same structure as the initial chunk generation code 
but now we have to tweak a bit of stuff okay so first of all uh, we have to make sure that you know we have to tweak and that tweaking works and uh, second of all we have to make sure that we also implement um, the fact that if there's a breaking block if there's a broken block there then we don't put any water block okay so first of all let's deal with the tweaking so we can delete this bit of code because that will be taken care of over here so delete. and notice that we did that for for even in the trees we only had the chunk dot push we didn't have the uh, we didn't have like this part over here we only had the chunk dot push part so the next part of this tweaking process is we have to eliminate these times fives because for some reason when i was coding this i um i made it I made the incrementation for the X and Z already plus five. And in the initial chunk generation, we didn't have that plus five. We just had plus one. So we had to times everything by five. So notice how over here I have to do times X divided by five. But in the initial chunk generation, it's just times X, I think. Yeah. Um, and then uh, like that, we also have to do this over here. So times eliminate that times five and same with this one, but not for the V plus H because that one I did not increment by five. So, anyways, uh, now that we've done all the tweaking processes, now we have to implement those uh, broken blocks detection. And to do that, I wrote this bunch of code over here. So, um, it's quite simple. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines, basically like five lines. I have this variable over here called var broken water block, which is false. And uh, I have this for loop, which goes through all the current broken, uh, broken blocks. And if that broken block is in the same position, so if its x value is equal to the x, if its y value is equal to the v plus h, and if its uh, z value is equal to the z. Uh, if that's the case, then there is a broken water block at that position. And then when I, when I found it, I just break through it, okay? And uh, yeah, that's basically how I find this broken water block. So to use this algorithm, um, we have to use this broken block, uh, broken water block uh, variable. So over here, we can just say, and broken water block is equal to false. Okay, because this basically this has to run only if there is no broken water block, right? If there is a broken water block there, then that means that the block shouldn't be there. So that's why and broken water block should be false. Copy and paste this, like we did for. Uh, pretty much all the other infinite turn generation code to the other direction. So copy this and go to the next direction, which is which starts over here. So go down and paste it in between over here. And then two more times. So the next direction is over here. Go down in between. Over here. Last time over here. That's a new one. Last direction and in between over here. So save that, refresh if you have to, and um, yeah, click on the link. For some reason, I always spawn on, on top of a tree, which is weird. But uh, you can see that there's depth, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I can still walk across water. And if I if I move, it um, if I go to a different chunk, and if it renders again, then uh, it creates like a new, it, like the water continues. And notice how this is like leading up to a really nice river. It's quite nice actually. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice. There's a tree over here. It's quite nice. So uh, now we have to make it so I can't place on water, I can't break water, and I can't move on top of water. Then we can see a cursor on, or, or like this white plane on top of water. Okay. So uh, what we're actually supposed to see is like when I point towards this, uh, what what I'm actually supposed to see is, a, is that the white plane is uh, is on the block below the water. Okay. So let's go ahead and fix that. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is add this condition. So if you go to the render function towards the end of the program and go to this if statement towards the end of it, we have to add a condition, which is this. So basically this code over here uh, detects when there is an intersection. And we want to say that uh, if, the, if the block that you're intersecting with is water, then don't sort of like basically make next not true, okay? And if next is not true, then it won't uh, execute this program. Over here. Then we'll see that our white plane is actually not there anymore. So, so yeah, there you go. 
So guys, the next step is to uh, not move in water or like on top of water. So uh, right now, in the uh, if I go to an example, we can see that we are sort of moving. We're walking on water. Okay, and if I go, uh, if I you know break these blocks, like the water is like wall, so I can't I can't go past it. So um, what we have to do is make it so that we can't, so that like water is like a void. Okay, so to do that, let's go to the update function where we create the moving controls. Here, update function. Okay, so remember the update function also has an infinite terrain generation code. So if we look at these four. Uh, if statements where it basically uh, controls like how we move and everything we basically have to look at this if condition over here this nested if condition so for the first one uh, let's just add in this condition and b the block type is not water okay so b is that block the block type is not water so if it's not water that means that we can you know move um, wait if it's not water yeah so no, wait, if it, <laughs> okay, so this is true, yeah. So this means that if the block type is not water, then uh, then make these like collision detection stuff. So make the four back equal to zero, right, left equal zero. We move backwards slightly when we collide onto a block. Um, but if it is water, then it won't do this stuff. So that, mean, that means we can move through water. So just copy and paste that condition in the other three um, if statements. So here over here and over here okay and make sure you paste them correctly okay so don't paste it like in between that bracket so after that we also have to make it so that uh we we can fall through water and to do that it's quite self-explanatory we just go over here and put the same condition so in this if statement and also in this if statement so this basically means that if the block type is water then this doesn't apply okay so like water is like a void Okay, so um, yeah, so now if we save and refresh, we should be able to fall through water and swim through water and so on. So right now, before I could walk on water, now I go down, okay? So notice how I'm inside water, now I'm very inside water, but I can still break water, okay? And I can still place a block uh, on water like that, okay? So. We have to avoid that. So let's go ahead and make it so that we can't break water and so that we can't place a block on a water block. So the code for not uh, breaking water is quite simple. So let's just go ahead and look at that one first. Uh, the code for breaking a block is over uh, here in the click in the document of body dot add event listener click. Over here in this if statement, just add this condition. Okay. So this basically means that once again, this similar to the plane. Uh, not seeing the plane, we're saying that if the block uh, name, if the block's i name, uh, dot name is not water, then do this. But if it is water, don't do next and so on. So guys, now let's go to the placing block code. Okay, this is just slightly more complicated. So we have to look at a few conditions. So if you go to the document dot add event listener key down, uh, we can take a look at um, this over here. Okay, so uh, inside this we can say if the blocks of the i dot name is water, then do something. Okay. So first of all, let's create a variable over here called placed in water. Okay. And set that equal to false. So if this blocks i dot name is water, then surely means that you're placing the block. The block that is about to be placed is going to be in water. So make that true and continues because we don't want to uh, carry on with this part over here. Okay. So just continue to the next part of the for loop. So now if we go down to over here, we can create a condition that says if the block was placed in water. Okay. So we can use uh, an if statement over here, then run a for loop that goes through all the blocks in the chunk of the block that is to be placed. So we can say var i is zero, i should be smaller than um, chunks of the identified chunks xz the length and i plus plus and now we have to find that um we have to find that water block that we're about to place the block in so we have to say if um this guy over here and then make sure you put the i okay so index i 
So this time copy this over here. So dot x is equal to x. And if this, also remember the i over there, dot y is equal to y. And this dot z is equal to z. So now we've found a block at the block that we're about to place. And surely this has to be a water block, but just to make you know, sure we just always say that if this uh, block type is equal to one, okay? So now what we have to do is remove this water block because in Minecraft, when you place a block inside water, that water block is removed from the world, okay? So we have to do the same thing. So we need to say chunks, blah, blah, blah and this time remove that I dot splice I one. So basically add the index I in this chunks array uh, remember it's a two-dimensional array so inside this array inside the chunks array at the index i sort of just yeah just remove that element and then we have to append this to the broken blocks array so broken blocks dot push in python you use append in javascript you use push a new block at the xyz coordinates it's false over here because it's not a place block and it's a water block and now we have to paste this bit of code because now that we've uh, sort of changed the water mesh the water uh, like the water blocks we have to remove it we have to remove the mesh from the world and then we have to restate its mesh uh, notice how I did over here minus block uh, broken blocks dot length and then we have to say that it's uh, count to zero okay so we're basically removing the whole water mesh from the world okay and ever since I started that biome video I used this algorithm where I removed a mesh and then remade it afterwards because I updated something in the mesh. So now that I've removed it, we have to add it afterwards. But make sure you put a break statement here to improve efficiency. The break. And then, uh, yeah, so let's recreate that mesh in this for loop. We have to just copy this, paste it over here, and say if this block type is now equal to water, and then change these uh, to, uh, to water index instead of index. And yeah, so over here we deleted, over here we updated the the, wa the water mesh by removing a block. And then here we deleted that mesh and then over here we reconstructed that mesh because now, and now it, that has resulted in uh, a mesh without that water block. And obviously we have to add that to the scene. So scene.add blocks water index dot mesh. And yeah, there you go. Uh, that should do everything I think yep so now let's finally test this thing out so save and refresh uh, let's see we can go inside water let's see if we can break water okay so no it breaks the block below water that's that's exactly what we want and if we place a block now it places it inside the water so we can't place a block on top of water anymore. it places it, it inside the water so just like that and uh, let's see if this has saved after we re-enter this chunk. So I'm just gonna exit this chunk. Go pretty far behind. Nope, still there. And yeah, okay. So now let's check if it's back. So we can see that that oak block is there. That oak block is there. And we've, remember we dug two blocks and that's a real, or three blocks. That one. So yeah, that works. Everything works. Uh, we have implemented water. This is actually pretty nice scene I guess. Let's see if that tree renders over there. Yes it does. And now I'm sinking into the water. So cool. And yeah, so this is a good way to um, say what's going to happen in the next video. In the next video I'm basically going to uh, implement the water flowing. So this is actually going to flow down instead of just staying up there. Um, so yeah, that's nice. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to share, comment, and like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, Please do so, as it really supports this channel and the series. And um, yeah, I guess with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video, part 20 of the series.